We're out today on one of the walks in Aberdeen. We're going to go around Union Terrace Gardens. <laughs> <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> right. Right, we're out today walking around Aberdeen. We're doing one of the Aberdeen trails. Uh, there's a heap of leaflets and trails and brochures etc online. I'll leave some links in the comments below. So we've just crossed over the Union Terrace Bridge uh, and see the, the Kelly Cats. Now according to the brochure, the Kelly Cats, which should really mean called the Boys Cats, because they were designed by a guy called Sydney Boys in eight. They were just... Oh, would you stop it, you <laughs> fucking... Bam! <laughs> the cat statues on the bridge are actually called Kelly Cats, but they were designed by a guy called Sydney Boys. Now he was a, a master of Grey's School of Art. But the cats are named after a guy called William Kelly, and he was the architect who commissioned them and oversaw the widening of uh, Union Terrace Bridge on between 1805 and 1809. Apparently the original bridge spanned the Denburn Valley, and it was built in 1802 to 1805. And the south part of it of that is in, actually in the Duffy Park. We'll maybe add a wee clip to that later on. So Union Street itself was built from 1800, and is almost a mile long and it's partially a viaduct and apparently the cost nearly bankrupt the city. So this is a statue of King Edward VII, 1841 to 1910. Now he was the second child and the eldest son of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. And Prince Albert's statue actually stood here until 1914. It's further down in the park and we'll see it shortly. Now His Majesty's Theatre actually takes his name from King Edward VII. Here's the entrance to the Union Terrace Gardens toilets. They're obviously shut off just now, but it was an open day a couple of weeks ago, so I was actually down there taking some videos and I'll splice it in just now. Gardens is right in the centre of Aberdeen, so there's several buses and trains etc come in. And if you want to stay close by, you've obviously got this hotel here right on Union Terrace, or there's a travel lodge just at the corner of Bridge Street and Union Terrace. Now along the terrace there's three pavilions, so that one's called Union Street Pavilion, this one is called Burns Pavilion, and there's one further up called Rosemont Viaduct Pavilion. So there are going to be cafes and restaurants etc. There's a couple of them have been leased but I think that one there hasn't been yet. 
Now they're styled on the old trams, apparently they used to run up and down New or through Albert, throughout Aberdeen. And the trams began in the 1870s and they were originally horse-drawn trams. Then they moved on to the electric trams and I think they all ended about May 1958. And if we go down the beach, well maybe again we'll add this on later on to our video, but down by the beach, the science centre, the satrosphere is actually the old tram shed. So we'll maybe go down there later and put it on to the, the end of this video. Outside the Burns Pavilion is a statue of Robbie Burns. Now his father, William Burns, he was born near Stenhaven. He was a trainee gardener at Inverugi Castle near Peterhead. And before that, before becoming a tenant farmer in Ayrshire. Burns himself visited Aberdeen on Sunday, this is very exact, Burns himself visited Aberdeen on Sunday the 9th of September 1787 during his Highland tour. That is very exact. So we've got our fact checker, because Carol doesn't believe Inverugi is a place near Peterhead, but apparently the brochure says so, but... Go on in. Inverugi is a small village in Aberdeenshire, Scotland, to the northwest of Peterhead. There you go. And there's an Inverugi break across the tributary of the river Ugi. Ugi. Ugi Ugi. Ugi Ugi. Yes, sir, I can Ugi. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Union Terrace. So this was built in the early 1800s and apparently it was originally curved and then it was realigned and widened in 1891 and I think that's when the you'll see the arches underneath the bridge in a minute the, that's when they were formed so here's the the chess boards, the draft boards I remember as a kid there used to be big boxes beside them with the draft pieces in it and you had sticks to move the, move the bits about the board but I'm not sure where they are or if they maybe come out in the summertime or not now this is the central lawn of the park, like the heart. Now in, years ago there used to be a bandstand in the middle, and uh, the open air concerts etc. The Oktoberfest was actually held here one year. No, oh, I've obviously said something wrong. Here's my correction coming, auto correct. Oh. <laughs> Here's my... <laughs> So this is all part of the Grand Staircase, we'll speak of that in a minute. So here's a statue of Prince Albert, and as I mentioned earlier on, he used to sit in the corner of Union Street and Union Terrace until 1914. Now when Princess Victoria became Queen at the age of 18, and then two years later she proposed to Albert, because by tradition no one can propose to a reigning monarch. Now they married in 1840 and he became Prince Consort and obviously that's when they went away and bought their holiday home out in Balmoral Castle etc, out in the Royal Dee side. Now Albert became ill in 1859 and died in 1861. Queen Victoria wore black until her own death in 1901, 40 odd years, 40 years. So Carol take note, she, she's disappeared already. Here's the Rosemont Viaduct Pavilion. And then behind that we've got Central Library. St Mark's Church and His Majesty's Theatre. Now here we've got the Central Library. So these three buildings, you've got the Central Library, St Mark's Church there and His Majesty's Theatre. And apparently they're known as education, salvation, and damnation. So here's the central library. Now this was contributed and opened by the world-renowned philanthropist Andrew Carnegie in 1892. Then we've got Salvation, this is St. Mark's Church. This was, so this was designed by A. Marshall Mackenzie. 
and it's got a Corinthian pillar portico and the dome inside echoes St Paul's Cathedral in London and it held its final service on Sunday 21st of May 2023 Now here we've got HMT, His Majesty's Theatre this is one of only two theatres in the world not to be renamed to Her Majesty's for Queen Elizabeth's reign and apparently the other one is the his Majesty's Theatre in Perth, Australia and it, This one was designed by Frank Matcham and his, perf his first performance was a pantomime version of Little Red Riding Hood on the 3rd of December 1906 Now I think that cafe's named 1906 and I never realised why until now I'm sure I've seen 1906 in that cafe somewhere. Maybe not. So here's a statue of William Wallace. Now, sometimes there's a, a water feature here, so this is all filled up with water and it kind of falls off like one of those infinity pools. So here are the, so here's the symbol of the clan Wallace. Now, before the redevelopment of the park, this used to be a, it used to be an enclosed park gardens here, and I'm sure this is for Prince Albert stood in the middle. Lions and heraldry typically symbolize royalty, but they also represent valor, bravery, and strength. Now this Latin motto is based on the, the Wallace battle cry, Oh god, I forgot to say this. Pro... How would you say that, Carol? Pro-Liberty Patria. Here we go. And apparently that stands for... Patri... Patria, yeah. What are you going for? Pro-Liberty... Or Tat... <laughs> Patria. I did it French. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I'll tell you, see if you scan through there, you'll see a bit of new art. Where is oh, the yeah. horizon right, on this? It, let's just focus. Yeah, I wouldn't. Right, so what are you going for? Go for... Pro Liberty Patria. And apparently it stands for, for the freedom of my country. Hold on, I can Google it actually. Oh, Google, okay, here we go. Oh, All the correct fact checker. Oh, while we're waiting, while we're waiting for Dr. Google. Ah, there you go. Did you know there was a wall estate? No. Apparently Wallace Day is the nearest Saturday to 23rd of August, the anniversary of his death. Who knew? I'll see if anybody knows what that stuff is growing on the tree bark. I'm going to put it in the wee comments below, please, because I'm quite fascinated. It's on every tree around this wee tram or wee coffee house eh, called Common Sense, but the trees are covered in it, right to the tips of the branches. I don't know if it's a fungus or a disease or I don't know. Do you know? No. Me. <laughs> Are you asking me? No, or I'm just general public? I'm asking anybody who's still got, got Nobody to this watches point. the videos. Who's still got to this point? We're just doing this for rain amusement. What is it? Is it naturists? Or are they the naked ones? <laughs> Botanists? Yeah. Yeah, whatever. No, naturalists. Who am I needing? <laughs> I don't know, do you want to kick eyes off and dance around about them? No. It's a, it's a naturalist then. Well, if there's no, any... No, nature. Oh, well, Christ. if any person with their clothes on knows what this is, put it in the comments below, please. It's watching. Good views. Oh no, that's me. How do I flip it? I am a bit kind of. This is better. First time in one of these trams. Oh, sorry. Nice coffees. They're 
there's also a wall of books that you could read while you're in, as well as some games. If you have your children in the book. Silver Fox. Oh my! <laughs> Lucky I'm in charge of editing. <laughs> Does he look? How nice is it to sit here and have these views? Oh. These are available at City Libraries in Aberdeen, free of charge. Also available to download. Online. And to download, yeah. That's and that's right. what we've done. So we've got a license for us to do. Remember that? All those nights that you were. Right, you're right, you're right, you're right. When I was being neglected, you mean? Yeah. Sorely neglected. So we just downloaded and then copied into a little book. Let's have a wee shifty. You don't have to zoom in. See, there is 1906. Yeah, that's gone now. Doesn't say that on the glass. Right, coffee time. Cool. So here's another set of those concrete benches that I mentioned earlier on. UTG, it's more... Ah, right, you, can, you can make it out better here. Now apparently, around about here somewhere, there's an International Workers' Memorial plaque. Now we've been running about this thing a couple of times but we can't see it anywhere. So if anybody knows where it is, give us a shout and let us know. But apparently it commemorates uh, all those who have lost their lives through in the workplace for injury or illness. And it's part of a wider campaign by the trade unionist movement to remember the dead, fight for the living. And there's a big obelisk in the Persley Walled Garden in the city of River Dawn, um, and that's where the International Workers' Day is marked. So that's Cowdery Hall inside the Aberdeen Art Gallery. Come around here is the old Triple Kirks, Denburn Road, and then here's a view of the gardens. It's called the Vantage Point, but we'll here we wander up. Now according to the little booklet, this is a glacial this is a hey, Carol, what's in this? This is good. This is a glacial valley and it was created by ice from meltwater erosion. The Denburn was roughly where the railway line is now. Here is there. And before 1800, the small but important burn formed at the town's westernmost edge, and the only road crossing was Bow Brig, which is down in the south there, which I think is underneath Union Terrace Bridge. And the barn in 1879, which was now unsanitary, was fully culverted. So it must still be under here, eh? I like how when you look at the tram from this angle, it looks like it's sitting on an arc. Aye. You know, like a Like a boat. It does look like a boat, does yeah. it, eh? And then the halo. Yeah. The three um, big pins. That's part of the lightings, but we'll get around to that yeah. in a minute. Just see the old, see here. the buildings on Union Terrace as well. See yes. Savings Bank. This must have been some oh, yeah. some street at some point. And here's the arches. Cause that see those arches for the bridges now. The road is now. Yeah. That was the bit that was added on when it was straightened. Cause it was on a curve. And that was the bit that was widened and straightened. Right. What is that fountain down there? Tis wide. Why do you never do that to me? <laughs> Why? What is he doing? Well, he keeps going down. He's like a... Um, <laughs> he keeps what? He keeps, yes, he keeps what? going. Look, keep watching. It's like drinky birds. One of my exercises. He keeps kind of going down on them. 
for the man to go down and his wife again <laughs> as you do this is the grand staircase over there and apparently there is 67 steps and when the gardens were refurbished there's a curved walkway and which is now um, wheelchair friendly included it's really good because there's well you can get your bikes and push chairs buggies wheelchairs etc down in at the park now and all around the terraces you can see the seating where that couple is and Carl's convinced. Do you know the canoodling? <laughs> oh, they're, oh, he's down again. Canoodling, canoodling. Oh, yes, there you go. Yes, he's a drinky so bird. There you go. See, everybody's happy. Now these, oh. there was, um, there used to be really lovely granite steps here, and like, I'm not sure where all the granite, granite went. I think it can be found in uh, lots of gardens in and around Aberdeen. Here's one of the original Taza planters. You know, these terracotta urns or vases were a feature throughout the earlier gardens and Taza apparently is an Italian word which means cup it also refers to the type of ornamental bowl or saucer on a stem so this is the floral coat of arms of Aberdeen the lepers are formed by two varieties of boxed leaf holly golden gem and dark green for their spots and that's also used as the shield and the outline of the city motto, which is Bon Accord, you can make, just make it out at the top. Now in the middle, you'll get the three castles and the red and white eventually in the summertime. And the red and white are busy lizzies. And surrounding the background bed are Heath Perlwort. No idea what that is. All through the park there's lighting. Now the big thing here in the middle is a big floating light, it's called the Halo, Halo feature. Now this won the Scottish Design Awards 2023 and it won the Gold Award. It's part of a wider project with 12 hanging street signs across Aberdeen. There's a, there's a few of them, we'll try and splice them into the, the video again. There's ones uh, the Belmont Street, Market Street, Crown Street etc. I'll try and get a few in on the way home. Uh, now Aberdeen is Aberdeen is the only Scottish city to achieve purple flag status. So this is like the blue flag for beaches and it's for achieving both vibrancy and safety in the city centre. There's Union Terrace again. So this is up behind the Union Terrace Pavilion. That's Union Street ahead of us there. And the Denburn Road and we're left and you can hear the railway line on the left as well now that's the outer wall of the Union Terrace garden toilets which are closed just now but like I said there was something there was an art exhibition on last week which I'll put in some videos for now down here if I can make it out where is it now we're right at the end of the gardens, that's Union Street there, Union 
there a uh, Union Street Bridge there, Denburn Road and the railway line. Now I seem to remember as a kid being able to look over that bridge and see a railway turntable here. And it does say it on the, the map, but it kind of seems, but I'm, I'm sure, well, when I was younger you used to be able to look over that bridge and there was definitely a turning table or, or the circle where a turning table used to be here. Now apparently this the now apparently these gardens used to be called Trainee Park because it was once a station at each end and steam trains can only efficiently run in one direction and therefore there was a need for a turntable and this saves space rather than you know, a Y or a triangular junction. So there was two turntables. This one that was run about here was called the Northern Turntable and the Southern Turntables uh, it's doing beside Duffy Park and it's been restored by the Ferry Hill Railway Heritage Trust and that will be picked up on the Duffy Park Trail which is another one that will be coming to the channel soon. Do you like it? Okay. Pop my sound while I do my Miley Cyrus. <laughs> yeah. Stick your head in the hole and pretend you're Miley Cyrus. No. <laughs> Five foot two and she sings about do no, you can't say that. <laughs> I can because right. I'm owning it. Oh okay. Like sing as a song. Sing as a song, And this echo? This is all without drink. <laughs> It's not. It's, me it's meant to resonate and give you happy feelings. Oh, it's meant to give me happy feelings. Right, it's certainly not giving me happy feelings. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's meant. It's, it's meant to energise your own body. Oh, acoustics. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Well, maybe next time. This is a unicorn, national emblem of Scotland. And again, we've actually got a national unicorn day on the 9th of April. Who knew? So here's a statue of the leopard. This was done by uh, Rob Mulholland. The leopards apparently were once thought to be a hybrid animal, and the name is a compound of Leo. Bard. Leo for lion, pard for panther. And it appeared in the city coat of arms around about the 1400s, which has got two leopards. And you'll see it on uh, heaps of buildings, lampposts, etc. And I was actually thinking, well, maybe have a day leopard spotting around about Aberdeen someday. That's the kids' play park. There's kids in it, so I didn't want to film too much, obviously. And we're now on the central lawn, heading up towards the multicoloured sign and the, the halo up there. And in the background you can see Central Library, St. Mark's Church and His Majesty's, and William Wallace. Now here's another one of Rob Mulholland's artworks. It's a globe formed by swirling bats. Now there's several names for a, a swarm of bats, including cauldron. Now, apparently through the archway, on the Lord Denburn are the remains of the old platforms and School Hill Station. Now this was once three storeys high with aerial walkways including one near the entrance to HMT. Although part of Rosemont Viaduct, the arch flyover is called Denburn Viaduct. There beside the Triple Kirks is roughly where Martin Bray was, and that's if you remember where Mary Slessor was born. Now, Union Terrace Gardens is part of the Aberdeen Trails 
set of walks that the, the council have produced. You can pick them up with the libraries or you can download them online. So what I did is I downloaded it online, put it in a wee booklet, and that's what I've just been following. Now there's maps at the back, there's trees and plants and etc. all around about here, all fancy different vegetation etc. And if you're that way inclined, you can go around and do some tree spotting and plant spotting. So here's a wee map, it's in the trail guide. Now this, the, the gardens are right in the centre of Aberdeen, easy to get to. Uh, and it's, on, it's actually on the National Cycle Route number one. Uh, there's plenty of cafes, restaurants, toilets, etc. all around about here. Union Terrace Gardens was first opened as a public park in 1879. And it's built in a natural valley after the neighbouring Union Street was constructed in a series of bridges. It had a £28 million refurbishment and reopened in late 2022. It covers around two and a half acres and it's got roughly one kilometre or 0.6 miles of paths all around about it. Now this one's called the Singing Hollow and it's a, an artistic feature by Wolfram Graugner. The stone itself is a naturally formed volcanic basalt column and apparently if you put your head in through the hollow and hum different notes until resonance send a gentle sensation through your body. And if you've listened to Carl humming earlier on, it didn't have worked with me anyway. Here's a slide. Here's a slide to get from the top level to the bottom level. Go try the slide. Go on. <laughs> Here's Carl, here we go. Carl's going to show you how the children get from the top to the bottom. Oh, she is going for it as well. Oh, well done you. <laughs> 57 years old. <laughs> so this is a, a Rowan Tree artwork by Nicola R. Aitkinson. And it's a place in a park where you can sit and reflect and think about loved ones. Now the Rowan tree is steeped in tradition and folklore, and in Celtic folklore, it's a tree of life, symbolising courage, wisdom, and protection. Right. So this one, I always thought it was an apple, but it's not. It's actually a, a sculpture by Mary Bourne for Mary Slessor, and she was one of the world's most celebrated missionaries. So Mary Slessor was born in Mutton Bray, which was demolished to build the Denburn Viaduct, and her family moved to Dundee in 1859. In 1876, she sailed to Africa, lived in Nigeria, where she learned the language, and apparently she saved many twins, because due to superstition, they were abandoned at birth. There's also a plaque for her on Belmont Street, and an asteroid out in outer space called Asteroid 4793 Slessor. Now she's only one of two locals to feature on banknotes. So Mary Slessor was on the Clydesdale Bank £10 note. And can anyone tell us the name of the other person? I'll give you a clue, she's on it. The Royal Bank of Scotland, £5 note. And she's on one of the other trails which we'll be doing later on in a series of videos. And she'll be on the, the Lower Deeside Trail. Now in the background there, there's a silhouette of crows within a crow. And that was a sculpture by Rob Mulholland. God, he's been busy in this park. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of sculptures by him. He was a graduate of Edinburgh College of Art. Now a crow, or a corby, uh, which is relevant to this area, because apparently this was called Corby Haw, a Scots word for this area. Haw meaning low-lying area of ground. And what do you call a group of crows? A murder. Oh, a murder. <laughs> A murder, a murder. And if you only see one, it's an attempted murder. <laughs> Tune in, I'm here all week. <laughs> so that's us finished the walk around the Union Terrace Gardens. So the only thing that we didn't manage to find was a workers' memorial plaque, which is up beside, apparently it's up beside the um, Rubeslaw Viaduct Pavilion for with a cracking cup of coffee. So if anybody knows where that is, 
please let us know in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> right, this is that's the finish of the Union Terrace Gardens walk. There's a few more we've downloaded, and over the next couple of months, when I've got some more spare time in my hands, the plan is that we'll get out and about, film them, and see if anybody watches. So if you've anybody stuck around this long, give us a thumbs up, a like and share, and even hit the subscribe button, it's free. And we hope to see you soon. Bye bye.